It's good. It, uh, it, it's good. Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all doing well today, man. I really do hope that Chelsea 2, Burnley 0. Thomas Tuchel's first win as Chelsea manager with his first goals. Oh my giddy aunt, mate. So much to discuss. Lineups, goal scorers, performance, shape, opposition, Burnley. No mugs. They're on a winning run, beat a very good Aston Villa side. They were the first team to win away at Anfield for like a thousand years. Burnley and no mugs. This is a good thing. So much to crack into today, boys and girls. Subscribe to Football Therapy. I can't talk. Subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new to the channel. Daily content, of course. So make sure the bell notifications icon is switched on. And if you want to help me out, please do drop a like on the video as we talk about a beautiful three points at Stamford Bridge and get into today's match review. Right, going into this game, Thomas Tuchel's second game. Now he's finally had some time on the training pitch with the players. We didn't know what to expect. If we didn't win this game or lose, if we lost this game, it could be really bad, especially considering for the radical new approach Thomas Tuchel's going with the lineup. We'll talk about in just a moment. It had a lot of eyebrows being raised, and had we lost considering that lineup, there would have uh, been a lot of upset Chelsea fans, I do believe. So, like I said at the top of the video, Burnley and no mugs, they're in a good run of form. They won at Anfield, they beat a good Aston Villa. Generally, they've got their confidence back and they're a very well, decent, organised team, very well coached by Sean Dyche. And we limited them to one shot, one chance, in stoppage time, right at the end of the game. Total dominance from Chelsea Football Club, but we kind of saw something similar against Wolves at Stamford Bridge, but it was like toothless, benign possession. And to be honest, man, in the opening 30 minutes of this game, I was worried. I was like... Dude, this kind of looks a little bit similar to the Wolves game. Oh my god, this needs to get better. Chelsea scored two goals. El Capitan at the end of the first half. Beautiful assist from Callum Hudson-Odoi. Cesar's Pilaqueta the near post. Rifling it across goal. Uh, Nick Pope can't save it. Good time to score. And in the second half, that's right, Marcus Alonso out from the cold, chest, knee, left footed volley into the net, beautiful finish, he, he scores back, we all, we all know Marcus Alonso scores bangers, whether it's headers, volleys, goals like this, free kicks, he definitely scores banging goals, no one ever questioned that and he did that today certainly back into the team and Chelsea did have a lot of domination from there superb combinational play so let's talk about this lineup a little bit more and show you that who scored match graphic interestingly Thomas Tuchel for now is sticking with the back free system maybe to be defensively resolute but it looks like the majority of the defending is actually done by uh, mainly Thiago Silva with two defensive sixes in front of him and Cesar Azpilicueta gets forward much more than Antonio Rudiger this can sort of make a back four system with Alonso and Azpilicueta getting forward as fullbacks almost. So great functionality in the midfield from both Jorginho and Kovacic who have a good chemistry between them, a good relationship they always have and then you had Tammy Abraham who didn't have the best of times, Timo Werner and Mason Mount kind of in the floating free roll behind the striker. Sub appearances from Kai Havertz, Reese James and Christian Pulisic. Of course Sean Dyche employed a 4-4-2 system a very defensively well-organized side that kind of move around in unison and like I said they've been playing well recently it needs to be said for us to limit them to one chance in the whole game and that was in stoppage time incredibly good it shows control but you can never feel safe against a team like Burnley because one break and they do you and if we didn't score that second goal that that chance in stoppage time they could have you know equalized 1-1 and then the mood let's be real would be completely different so let's take it back a little bit the opening 30 minutes was worrying it was sort of control but I, I didn't feel like Chelsea were really displaying the ability they have and towards the end of the first half of course when um, Azpilicueta scored the opener we were looking good and better from then and then afterwards we did sort of come in and out of the game but around when Marcus Alonso scored the second goal I think it was a Pulisic assist as well if, if I'm wrong feel free to correct me in the comments um, <laughs> that was just a beautiful goal and then Chelsea could have scored more they had plenty of chances Timo Werner had a couple of chances um, Reese James had a shot you know what I mean Mason Mount early doors 
for as magnificent he was in this game. He, he had like two completely wayward shots, but so did everyone. Timo Werner still low on confidence. Even if you're missing those shots, it's fine as long as you're popping them off because the game generally was under control. And when it's under control, you can't afford to just be a little bit more adventurous with your shots, but you can see a lack of confidence in shooting in the team. <laughs> Not from Marcus Alonso though, because he hasn't even been in the team. He's same old Marcus Alonso, apparently. You know, as this team develops and starts scoring more goals, I think we will be on an up would curve but superb goal from the Spaniards I did love this from Marcus Alonso honestly like I'm not his biggest fan or uh, he was so good for us under Conte but I don't like the disrespect he showed to the team in Frank Lampard with the West Brom game and he's been he had been awful defensively that any Chelsea fan would be lying to themselves if they think otherwise so anyway you know what let's talk about player performances now and we'll eventually talk about Marcus Alonso Edwin goal was okay he had pretty much nothing to do in this game but I'm hoping as the team's confidence progresses as a whole so will his um, Cesar Azpilicueta very very good scored the goal got forward Often, Mr. 7 out of 10 became a 9 out of 10 today. Very, very good indeed. Thiago Silva oozing class in the middle of that back three when he headed the ball back to Edu Mendy under pressure for him to catch it. Superb. He just, he's passing both feet, defensive positioning. It's Thiago Silva. You know, I don't need to say any more. Rudiger, probably the most quiet of the back three. Whether he'll keep his spot there, I'm hoping. You know, if he does well, he, he, gets, he gets to keep his spot. He deserves it. But a part of me really wants Zuma to come back in. And if we're going to play this formation, I'd love for him to come back in. Because he was like the best in Europe in winning aerial duels. We'll see what happens. I'm happy for Rudy to stay at the moment. Um, Marcus Alonso, he doesn't defend, does he? But in this position... In this system under Thomas Tuchel, apparently the wing-backs can be as attacking as Callum Hudson-Odoi. So if that is truly the case, then absolutely you can afford to have a wing-back like Marcus Alonso. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. And that's no disrespect to Callum Hudson-Odoi, whose defensive work is getting better and better. Maybe even better than Marcus Alonso, but Alonso can win headers in both boxes. And the goal was magnificent today. He had a point to prove, and he did pretty well, actually. So Chilwell should be concerned. I think if we went back to a fat back four system, Chilwell would probably immediately be dropped in. But while it's left wing back, he should be worried, man. At right wing back, Hallam hudson Adoy for me, he's probably man of the match. I thought both he and Mason Mount were excellent. But in terms of, like, my reaction to him being taken off when we were only one goal up, how I was worried and I was from that decision from Tuchel, probably shows how, for me, he was man of the match. He was so incredibly good. He got an assist, but arguably he should have had three assists in this game, I think. Magnificent, regardless. In terms of the midfield, Kovacic, excellent. We know what he does. Uh, dribbling the ball, progressing, a couple of wayward shots. Uh, Jorginho maybe a little bit more quiet. They're quite functional and reserved, so they're not going to shine out as like Galactico performers. Do you know what I mean in uh, in this instance? But they're both very functional, very good. Timo Werner, Mr. Bunch of Chances, playing the classics really, but he's looking better. His movement's good, his combinational play is good. The goal will come, hopefully, and then the rest will be history. Mason Mount was superb, like maybe as good as Callum hudson Adoy if he didn't have those couple of two like missed wayward shots in the first half. But that 180 turn when he runs between the channel and splits defenders, amazing. You add that to his defensive work, ball progression from deeper in the pitch, pressing wide play, He's magnificent, Mason Mount. Um, magnificent, Mason Mount. So there you have it. Superb. Um, who else played in this football match? Tammy Abraham, not very good. He got subbed at halftime, understandably. Uh, he'll have to do better if he wants to stay in this team. Pulisic looked pretty pokey when he came on. And you know what? Reese James looked really good as well because he hears that attacking. Apparently, you know, Reese James can play as a winger if you wanted him to, do you know what I mean? Like Callum hudson Adoy. so his delivery is probably, his crossing is probably better than Callum hudson Adoy. And that, for, you know, the fact how it's close is a huge compliment to Callum hudson Adoy. he's more of a tricky winger. So he came on, he looked great, Pulisic looked great, and who else, Kai Havertz didn't get much of a chance to impress, a couple of like long disguised passes. He'll be fine, like Werner, after a bit of time. So let's talk about the game a little bit more as a whole. Look, man, this result is massive for Chelsea Football Club. We needed the win. Burnley are in form. Yes, it's Burnley at home. On paper, you might be like, Burnley at home, you win that. But, you know, they won at Anfield, and no one wins at Anfield lately. So they're in high confidence. It's a good win. We're looking more functional. I'm not, you know, it's not the most exciting 
formation and lineup and approach in the world. Uh, you know, a, a sort of free back system with two defensive sixes. It's not the most exciting thing in the world. It's quite Wolverhampton Wanderers. But if you get so much productivity out of your wing backs in Alonso or Chilwell or Reese James or Callum Hudson Odoi, then the game becomes different and you can start putting teams to the sword. I'm hoping after a few games, Chelsea will start beating teams three and four nil, smaller teams. I'm not, you know, assuming we're gonna go and start slapping Manchester City about, but we've got the talent to be good. And hopefully from here, this is a great starting point. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I'll be keen to read your thoughts, feelings, and emotions about this three points, win, clean sheet, superb game of football. So, enjoy the football, <laughs> and I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I let me be.